A judge issued a smackdown to the ATF yesterday on a Sunday, which is why I never have a day off. And it's phenomenal related to the frames and receivers fiasco where ATF changed definitions and stuff. If you think that the Second Amendment is more important than Joe Biden directing his ATF to change all of the definitions that govern our tools and freedoms, then hit that like button and subscribe down below. By subscribing, you join this growing freedom family and you get Second Amendment news every single day, even when judges drop decisions on a late Sunday night. I will bring it to you. I've read through this decision. It is an absolute smackdown by this judge and Polymer 80 and its customers should be smiling this morning. Let's jump into the case here. This is the first page, and this is Polymer 80's lawsuit versus Merrick Garland. And for those who don't remember, I'll dig up the video, I'll pin it above here on the YouTube platform. Uh, but Polymer 80 is one of those groups that jumped into the lawsuit against the ATF, uh, where the, the they were where groups were getting uh, injunctions so that they could still operate their businesses in lieu of this potentially unconstitutional rule promulgated by the ATF. And this judge, just eviscerates them. It's awesome. Let's jump right into the introduction. It says the Gun Control Act of 1968 regulates firearms in interstate commerce. Among other things, the act requires manufacturers and dealers of firearms to have a federal firearms license. Dealers must also conduct background checks before transferring firearms to someone without a license, and they must keep records of, of firearm transfers, okay? We know this stuff. It's been around forever, yet ATF is looking to change things subtly. This is important. The act defines the term firearm four different ways. A, any weapon including a starter gun, which will or is designed to or may readily be converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive. B, the frame or receiver of any such weapon. C, any firearm muffler or firearm silencer. Or D, any destructive device. But such term does not include an antique firearm. Congress delegated authority to administer and enforce the act to the Attorney General. The Attorney General, in turn, delegated that authority to the Director of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. In 1968, ATF promulgated a rule interpreting the phrase frame or receiver. The rule defined the frame or receiver of a firearm as that part of the firearm which provides housing for the hammer, bolt, or breech block, the firing mechanism, and which is usually threaded at its forward portion to receive the barrel. In the decades since, ATF's definition of frame or receiver remained in place until the recent promulgation of the final rule. And the agency has not made any indication that it was changing course with respect to its interpretation of the act. Indeed, on three occasions in the last eight years, ATF confirmed that Polymer 80's products are not firearms for purposes of the GCA. So the court's laying the ground rule, the groundwork, right? This is the GCA, this is the definition Congress set up because only they can only they can do that stuff. And in, since 1968, ATF has been playing along and then came this final rule after Joe Biden had uh, that little speech inside of the Rose Garden where his donors wanted some action. And we all know what's happened since. This judge understands what's going on. However, in April 2022, ATF published a final rule changing, among other things, the 1968 definition of frame or receiver. The rule took effect on August 24 of 2022, and ATF split the phrase into two parts, assigning the term frame to handguns and the term receiver to any other firearm other than a handgun, such as rifles and shotguns. ATF then defined the terms frame and receiver along the same lines of the 1978 rule, though with updated, more precise technical terminology, but ATF did not stop there. Rather than merely updating the terminology, ATF decided to regulate partial frames and receivers. Under the new final rule, the terms frame and receiver shall include a partially complete, disassembled, or non-functional frame or receiver, including a frame or receiver parts kit that is designed to or may readily be completed, assembled, restored, or otherwise converted to function as a frame or receiver but the terms shall not include a forging, casting, printing, extrusion, unmachined body, or similar article that has not yet reached a stage of manufacture where it is clearly identifiable as an unfinished component part of a weapon. Example, unformed block of metal, liquid polymer, or other raw materials. 
When determining whether an object is a frame or receiver, ATF director is not limited to looking at only the object. When issuing a classification, the director may consider any associated templates, jigs, molds, equipment, tools, instructions, guides, or marketing materials that are sold, distributed, or possessed with the item or kit. To determine whether an object may readily be converted into a firearm, ATF may consider relevant factors such as time, ease, expertise, equipment, parts availability, expense, scope, and feasibility. That's section 478.11. You're going to hear a lot about that. The final rule also amends ATF's definition of firearm to include weapon parts kits. The ATF's new definition of firearm shall include a weapon parts kit that is designed to or may readily be completed, assembled, restored, or otherwise converted to expel a projectile by the action of an explosive. Now the judge covered all his bases. This is what Congress said it is. ATF played along, now all of a sudden, ATF's changed it to say something and mean something else to include all kinds of parts kits or directions or photographs or marketing material. That's not a gun. We know that. And this judge is pretty based as well. He then says how after the rule, uh, ATF issued an open letter to FFLs and then issued a specific letter to Polymer 80 saying, hey, all of your stuff, including your unfinished frames, are firearms, just so you know. Ha <laughs> ha, Joe Biden hates you, and this judge caught on to that. The judge then goes into the Vanderstock case, which is still in the courts, uh, and how that was decided in September 2022, and here comes the ass-whooping of ATF. Plaintiff attacks ATF's final rule and subsequent guidance letters as unlawful in several respects. One, that ATF has exceeded its statutory authority by creating and implementing a new definition of firearm that contradicts the plain language of the Gun Control Act and that ATF's attempts to implement that regulation are arbitrary and capricious. Two, that the final rule violates Polymer 80's First Amendment rights because the regulation is a content-based restriction on protected speech that cannot pass strict scrutiny. Three, that the final rule in conjunction with ATF letters violate Polymer 80's Second Amendment rights by regulating constitutionally protected conduct in a way that is inconsistent with the nation's historical tradition of firearm regulation, contrary to Supreme Court precedent, and of course he's talking about the Bruin decision, and four, that the final rule in conjunction with ATF letters violate Polymer 80's Fifth Amendment rights because they affect a regulatory taking without just compensation and they deny due process as impermissibly vague. The parties have briefed the issues and the motion is ripe for review. Substantial likelihood of success on the merits. To show a substantial likelihood of success on the merits, which is required for an injunctive relief, Polymer 80 need not show it's entitled to summary judgment on its claim, but must present prima facie case. Polymer 80 has met that burden with respect to at least one of its claims, that the final rule exceeds the scope of ATF's statutory authority and has therefore satisfied arguably the most important of the four preliminary injunction factors. The Administrative Procedure Act instructs courts to hold unlawful and set aside agency action found to be in excess of statutory jurisdiction, authority, or limitations. The plaintiff contends that ATF's final rule and its implementation of regulations exceeds the agency's statutory authority under the plain language of the Gun Control Act because its redefinition of frame and receiver and treatment of parts kits are inconsistent with the act's plain language. Plaintiff is Correct. So the judge is saying ATF is uh, acting outside of its, its statutory authority, and it has gone outside of the statutory uh, definitions that Congress has set forth in the GCA, and then he starts to pick them apart where guys and gals, I don't know if they can recover from this. The judge then goes into saying Congress explicitly said what it said in, this de in the definition and left no gray area, and that ATF is looking to create gray area, and he hammers them on it. The final rule's redefinition of frame or receiver conflicts with the statute's plain meaning. The definition of firearm in the Gun Control Act does not cover all firearm parts. It covers specifically the frame or receiver of any such weapon that Congress defined as a firearm. That which may become a receiver is not itself a receiver. Congress could have included firearm parts that may readily be converted to frames or receivers as it did with weapons that may readily be converted to fire a projectile but it omitted that language when talking about frames 
or, and receivers. When Congress includes particular language in one section of a statute, but omits it in another section of the same act, it is generally presumed that Congress acts intentionally and purposely in the disparate inclusion or exclusion. Likewise, when Congress uses a phrase in one part of a definition and excludes that phrase from another part of the very same definition, courts should give effect to Congress's deliberate exclusion. Congress excluded other adjectives that ATF adds to its definition. The final rule covers disassembled and non-functional frames and receivers. Congress, Congress's definition does not. Again, compare the language in Congress's primary definition of firearm to its secondary definition covering frames and receivers. The primary definition of firearm includes any weapon that is designed to fire a projectile. That language covers disassembled, non-functional, and antique firearms because they are designed to fire projectiles even if they are partially unable to do so. But Congress wanted to exclude antiques, so it explicitly said the term does not include an antique firearm, once again demonstrating awareness of the scope of the language it chose. In contrast, Congress did not choose to cover firearm parts that are designed to be frames or receivers, that is, incomplete non-functional frames or receivers. That omission is telling, particularly when Congress used that more expansive terminology in the same definition. ATF's new definition of frame or receiver is facially unlawful. By comparison, the final rule includes definitions of frame and receiver in 47812A that appear to be consistent with the statute. This further highlights that the final rule's expansion of authority in 47812C to fire on parts that are not yet frames or receivers goes beyond Congress's definition. 47812C is thus facially unlawful because it describes only parts that Congress intentionally excluded from its definition of firearm. It is purely an expansion of authority beyond the statutory language. That the firearm part is designed to be or may one day become a frame or receiver does not change the fact that in that moment it is not the frame or receiver of any such weapon. The judge also goes on to hammer them, saying weapons parts kits are not firearms, are not in the con congressional definition, and it's another overreach and unlawful by ATF, and here comes the slam dunk. For the reasons discussed, the court stands by its earlier reasoning and finds that plaintiff has demonstrated a strong likelihood of success on the merits of its claims, that the final rule specifically, 47811, and 47812C exceeds the scope of ATF's authority under the Gun Control Act. With its APA claim, the court need not address the merits of the remaining claims. In sum, Polymer 80 Inc. has shown it is entitled to preliminary injunctive relief. Having considered the arguments, evidence, and law, the court holds that the relevant factors weigh in favor of a preliminary injunction. When ordering injunctive relief, the court is obligated to state specifically and in reasonable detail the act or acts restrained or required under the injunction. Accordingly, the court preliminarily enjoins defendants and their officers, agents, servants, and employees are enjoined from implementing or enforcing against Palmer 80 Inc. or its customers in any manner the provisions of 27 CFR 47811 and 47812 that this court has determined are likely unlawful. In keeping with the relief this court has afforded to other similarly situated manufacturers, the court also extends the injunction of Polymer 80's customers who must be willing to transact business with Polymer 80 without fear of criminal liability in order for Polymer 80's relief to be effective. The court defines customers as individuals or entities who purchase directly from Polymer 80 any product classified as a firearm under 47811 or 47812C. The definition does not include persons prohibited from possessing firearms. And of course, this uh, ass kicking was doled out by Judge Reed O'Connor, the U.S. District Court judge, and ATF has taken another beating on their final rule for frames and receivers. And with all of these injunctions that have been granted because ATF has exceeded its statutory authority, I don't see them winning this case. And that is phenomenal. It's another big loss. And as this case continues, uh, Joe Biden is losing his gun control push. This is good. This is really good. Guys and gals, thank you for your time. Again, this came late last night, Sunday night, as I was uh, 
you know, pulling the pin for the for the weekend and uh, just wanted to bring it to you first thing this morning. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. I hope that you understand exactly what's going on. ATF's overreach is being fought every step of the way, which is why I say support those who support you. And I will see you all on the next one. Take care.